Today, we're talking about FPV after dark. Well, F FPV in the dark. We're gonna talk about flying an FPV drone at night when it's dark outside. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I've been talking a lot recently about shark bite, but in this video, we're gonna take a little bit of a detour from that, and we're gonna talk about an analog camera rather than a digital one. This video is about the Foxier Nano Toothless 2 Starlight, which is a camera that's made for flying in the dark or at night. We're gonna talk about what this camera is good for and why you might want one, uh, and whether it's a good choice for your drones. I wanna make sure I give you all the information you need, and I don't wanna to take too much of your time to do it, so let's go ahead and jump into it. The Foxier Nano Toothless 2 Starlight is a nano-sized camera, so that means it has a 14 by 14 mounting pattern. It might be a little bit too big or heavy for some Whoop-style drones, but it's gonna fit in a lot of micros, so I put mine in this Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle, uh, it replaced a Runcam Nano 2, and it works perfectly in that drone. So it's a really good size, um, and, and yeah, I think this is going to work in, you know, in a lot of things that you might be flying. The weight is 5.2 grams with the cable. It's a little bit heavier than some other cameras, but it's not outrageous. So the Runcam Nano 2 that I replaced was 3.2 grams, so it was a little bit lighter, but not too bad. It has a 2.1 millimeter lens, so the field of view to me felt pretty normal. It didn't seem especially narrow or wide. I'm gonna let you judge from the flight footage what you think of it, but yeah, it seemed about, about normal to me. You can switch this camera between the four x three and 16 by nine aspect ratios. It comes with a little control board that a lot of cameras have, and you, know, you can use that to change those settings. I actually did have to change that on mine because when I first set it up, I had my goggles set on 16.9 and the camera was set on 4x3 and for some reason it was cutting off the OSD uh, in my goggles so I couldn't see the battery voltage or anything like that. But I was able to use the control board to change that. So just keep that in mind if you get this camera. The pricing on the camera is a little bit higher than some other analog cameras you might find. So at the time of this video, the Runcam Nano 2 was about $20 and this camera was $35. You know, it's not outrageous. It's nothing like buying a Shark Bite or a DJI camera, but uh, you know, a little bit more expensive than some analog cameras you might find. But generally, this is just a normal analog camera. So it mounts the same way, it's wired the same way, and I'm not gonna go into the installation of this because it's really pretty simple. It's just like installing any other camera. But what you really want to know is what it's like to use this camera. So we're going to talk about what it's like to fly with the Nano Toothless 2 Starlight. We're going to start with day flights. And even though this camera is marketed for night flying, you know, I think it's important to be able to fly during the day and, and have a good image during that. I mean, you're certainly not going to want to change the camera on your drone every time you switch between day and night. So I think that both are really important. I also wanna say that I didn't change any settings on the camera between my flights. So I use the exact same settings between day and night. We're gonna take a look at some of that footage now. I took this out on a really sunny day and you know, it was very bright outside. I figured that would be kind of a worst case scenario for a nighttime camera. I was afraid the image might be a little blown out or it might just not look that good. But as you can see, I was really pretty happy with the way this looks. I didn't find anything wrong with it. I actually felt like it was one of the better analog cameras I've seen in terms of the daytime picture. I'm comparing it here to a couple of other cameras so you can see what, you know, what it looks like in comparison to other FPV cameras. So I've got a Runcam Nano 2 and a Nano 3 and you can just see how this image compares. And in my opinion, it's the best of the three. This, this camera looks really good. So I felt like the colors were good, general quality is good. There's, there's no weird haziness or blurriness that you see with some other FPV cameras. Like I said, I was really expecting that there might be something kind of weird about this image since it's really made to be flown at night, but I was I was happy with it. I would happily fly with this camera during the day. That was a nice surprise. But what you really care about is flying with this camera at night. That's what it's made for. And we're gonna talk about that, but first I wanna talk about why you might want to fly at night. Because maybe you feel like that's not really something that makes sense or not something that you would ever do. You know, maybe you've tried it and the camera didn't look good, but some of the reasons that I can imagine you might want to fly at night, one would be, you know, depending on where you live and what the time of year is, um, I know where I'm at, the days are starting to get a little bit shorter and I live somewhere where there's daylight savings time. And once that happens, the sun's gonna set here at like 5 p.m. And so I'm gonna get off work and it's already gonna be getting dark. And for me, that really cuts into the time that I can fly my drones. So having something that I could fly in the dark is a huge plus for that. It opens up a lot of options for when I can fly. You know, weather could also be a factor. So 
I live in Texas. It is really, really hot here right now. It's like 95 degrees during the day. And if I'm outside in the middle of the day on the weekend trying to fly, I can't really handle being out there for very long. The drone starts overheating and I start overheating and it's just not a great time. So being able to fly at night opens up a lot of options. That's gonna let me fly when it's a little bit cooler outside. You know, maybe there's fewer other people at the spots I'm at, or maybe that's just the time of day that I have available. I know that what I was hoping for with this camera was being able to fly in more situations and just being able to fit FPV into more days of the week or you know more parts of the day. So I was really curious to see if this would live up to those expectations. So I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you some flight footage. I did take this out a couple of times and fly it in the dark. Um, and we're gonna take a look at that while I talk about uh, how it was. So all this sounds great, and maybe you're convinced that flying at night sounds fun, but if you've ever tried it, you know that most drones really don't fly that well in the dark. I'm gonna show you some footage here of a Mob Light 7 with a Runcam Nano 3, and you can see this is, this is kind of symptomatic of what it's like to fly a lot of FPV drones in the dark. The image is really blurry and you can't see very far at all. And so as soon as you leave a well-lit area, it's just not that fun to fly. I'm, I'm really not having a good time doing this. And this is not something that I would enjoy doing or you know want to spend time doing. And that's been my experience flying most drones at night. So I was really excited to see this camera and curious to see what it could do and if it would make for a better experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the footage of flying this Tiny Hawk 2 at night with the Toothless 2 camera. And as we watch the footage, I'll tell you a little bit about what I thought of it. So immediately you can see that this is way better than most FPV cameras at night. You can see a lot further and you actually get some color, which is nice. And especially when I'm in these well-lit areas, I mean, it almost looks like daytime. But even as I start going into some of the darker spots, it does get pretty dark and hard to see and there's quite a bit of noise. And, and it, you know, in some of those areas, I don't think I'd wanna fly in that spot if I wasn't already somewhat familiar with where I was flying. But I'm gonna show you some camera shots of what it looked like in real life in these spots. And what I want you to see is that it was very dark in those places. So in these shots, I tried to set my camera to what I was actually seeing in person as I was standing there. And what I want you to see is that, I mean, these are really dark conditions. Like I, I would have been shocked if the camera had done any better than it did. I, I felt like the way it was performing was pretty impressive in this environment. So this image looks great at night, but at what cost? What price do you pay? Well, one is weight, so it is a couple of grams heavier than a comparable daytime camera. So that's one thing to maybe be aware of if you're trying to save every gram on your build. The other could be latency. So I think some people have mentioned that the latency on this camera is a little bit higher than other cameras they've used. Honestly, I'm not a top tier pilot, so I'm probably not the best person to ask, but I didn't notice any increased latency. It felt totally smooth and fine to fly to me. I didn't have any trouble with it. So I, th that's all I can tell you. Uh, you know, maybe somebody else out there would say they could notice a few more milliseconds, but to me, it seemed just fine. So overall, I was really happy with this camera. You know, it's not magic. And if you're flying in a really, really dark situation where it's just totally pitch black, it's still gonna be pretty hard to fly. You're gonna have a noisy image. It might be a little bit hard to see, but you know, I think in a normal night flying situation where you've got some small light source nearby or something like that, I think that this really does kind of, you know, give you a lot more options than what you would have with a normal FPV drone. I know for me, I feel like this opens up a whole new world of flying. I can fly at different times of the day now that may not have previously been options for me. Uh, if the weather's bad during the day, I can still fly at night. I'm really excited about all that. I'm also really happy that this worked well during the day. You know, I didn't want to have to be picking a different drone or pulling out the control board to change settings to fly during the day versus at night. Uh, and I was a little bit worried about that with this camera, but it just didn't prove to be a problem. Uh, I felt like the image was one of the better analog images I've seen uh, in both day and night. They kind of advertise this as an all weather camera. And what they mean is like you can fly it at all times of the day, like whether it's sunny or dark or whatever. And I definitely felt like that was true. So that was really cool to see. I think for you, I'd say that if you're interested at all in flying at night, you should definitely check this camera out. I felt like it performed great and it made this a really fun drone. It's about nine o'clock right now as I record this. And honestly, I'm probably gonna go fly it after this. I'm not just saying that. It's, it's really, really fun to fly. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. And if you do wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more. 
If you have any thoughts or questions on this camera, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and I'll respond to you and we can talk about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.